Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lightning. And in this video, we're gonna start um, a little two video project on color. So using color in your stage lighting um, is by far one of the top things people actually come to LearnStageLighting.com and to YouTube for. Some of our biggest videos in the past have been all about color. And I think there's an easy answer or an easy, easy reason why that is. And, and that is that color in lighting is the one attribute we have that kind of nothing else has. It's it's like the most powerful and unique thing that lighting can do um, that other parts of the show don't really do is, is changing the color of light. Color can be really powerful. So in this video, we're going to talk all about just here in the visualizer, all sorts of color combinations, how to choose colors to put together. And then in the next video, we're going to go back, we're going to go to the studio with different lights and talk about okay, how do we get the colors out of our lights that we're going for? And what are the ways that, that we're able to optimize that and be able to make it actually look the best on a live stage? Because that matters too. You can't just pick some colors, you know, and hope that they're going to work. There's there's a little bit more to it in meshing together the machine, the, the light, and you, the, the designer. So let's take a look at it. When it comes to using color, um, the first things we think about is like, okay, so what colors are we, do we get to use? And I'm just using the Onyx training show file here because it's, it's great. It's got a bunch of pre-programmed into it and we can work with it. So, you know, we end up usually, I recommend, and I don't like all the colors they have in here, so we'll add some more, doing, you know, red. Ooh. Oh, because the center fixture is a spot in this one. Red, green, I'm seeing now that these are not as well. Uh, oh, here we go. So red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow. This is real fun. So we basically have red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, white, and then uh, what's not in this training file that I also like to do just for general typical colors are, I like to do, Pull up my color picker here for being lazy. Amber. I like to do violet. Go find a nice violet there. Um, and then, you know, often, depending on the type of event that it is and what I need, I'll do some variations of, you know, color temperature blue stuff, like kind of steely, cool blues. Also color temperature orange stuff, real warm, orangey whites. Um, but other than that, you know, those are kind of the typical nine colors that nine or 10 colors that you need to make an event happen. And when you get more than that, honestly, things start to become a lot more complex and not really that much more exciting to the audience's eye. And that's going to apply most in one-off type shows. If you're programming or you use the same fixtures all the time, or you're doing a long running show where you have a lot of time to program, maybe it's a little more theatrical, then you might have way more colors. Or if it's a touring show, you have more time to program, you're gonna be running it for a long time, then you're probably gonna program more colors. But these are the basic ones. So then how do we put them together? How do we match up colors together, right? So you might be familiar with the color wheel. Uh, we'll probably end up drawing one and sticking one in the video because JP, our editor, is the best. Um, but the color wheel in an RGB space um, basically is red, green, and blue at triads um, as three sides, kind of like a peace sign, and then all the other colors between them, kind of similar to a color picker you might look at in a console. Okay. Um, in fact, you know, if I pull up, I'll just pull up the Onyx one here. What am I doing? You essentially have here the color wheel. And the color wheel is really important because it basically lays out the color and there's some rules we can follow to make good color combinations. Okay. And I can start to show you them and walk you through them here. Um, so the first are that if you're not familiar with this, complementary colors are the easiest combinations to make. And they're the ones you think of most often when you think of color combinations. Okay. Like if I select one group of lights here and I do red, and I grab my other group of lights and I do green. 
red and green. It feels Christmassy, it's complimentary, and it's pretty much across from each other on the color wheel generally. With, with lighting color, with it being RGB versus most color wheels for painting or print being CMY, um, there's a little bit of a variation there, but at the same time, there are many CMY fixtures out there. You're technically using a CMY wheel, which is really similar to an RGB one. It's, it's close, but not quite. Um, so you get things like that. Right, blue and yellow, let's do that. Okay, so we'll do our yellow, we'll do our blue. Okay, they look nice together, right? Things like magenta and green. Oh man, I love a good magenta and green. In RGB, that's a better complementary. Okay, so complementary colors are ones that are opposite of each other on the color wheel. They tend to look really great together, okay? The next type of color scheme that I like to do is called an analogous color scheme. And by the way, our article on color on Learn Stage Lighting goes into all of these with even more depth, okay? So analogous means they're close to each other on the color wheel. So if I'm in magenta on this first set of fixtures and I go to red, I've got something that looks nice together. In fact, let me focus these ones down at the stage a little better. Eh, maybe we kind of lose some of the rendering there. That might not have been the best idea. <laughs> Let me clear that super quick. But you see, they're, they're close to each other on the color wheel, or if, even if we go to orange or we go to blue, purples, these colors are close to each other. And so they're very emotional. Um, they're very intense. They can be very intense. And so that's analogous. You know, again, things like, of course, your red, and then we do a nice orange, right? Or a yellow, an orange, we even come closer. You know, analogous, they're close to each other on the color wheel, greens and blues, you know, things like that, yellows and greens, blues and cyans, you know. These are close to each other and they look good. They just feel a little bit balanced and a little more like weighted towards one emotion. So you can fit that to the music or the theme of the event that you're doing, okay? So that's really key as well. We also have triadic colors. So say we bring in a third set of lights. I'll bring in these uh, darts on this training file. So triadic is gonna be any three. So for example, you know, red, right, green, blue. Red, green, that one, blue, right? Um, or cyan, magenta, yellow, right? And these ones are on the triad, so like magenta, cyan, yellow, right here, red, green, blue, you know, you could shift it a little bit any direction, and it's always gonna feel really balanced and really good, um, because they're they're essentially all about 120 degrees off of each other on a typical color wheel, okay? Um, and so, you've got that. Um, what else? Of course, you can, in any color scheme, you can mix white in, okay? White and a color is a color scheme. Um, monochromatic is also a type of color scheme which is similar to analogous. Again, a very intense scheme. If, for example, say we take them all and we turn them all red, right? And then we take individual ones and we just, you know, we just shift ourselves towards orange a little. We grab another part of it and we shift it maybe towards magenta a little bit. Very intense because the colors are close to each other. And so, but still a strong color scheme and more visually interesting, right? Than when we just had them all and we just took them all to red, right? Having them shift just a slight bit makes it look a lot better, okay? Same works with blues, with greens, with yellows, with, with every color. Now, in terms of separating these things out on your rig, that's where you can have a lot more options with color. So up until this point, you know, we've been talking about, okay, use this color with this color. Here's how to make combinations. And we've kind of covered all the basics there. I mean, it's color, so there's no rules. But essentially, you know, this is the color wheel. These are the colors we have. And there's not that many more ways to put them together that look visually appealing. Just pay attention to the, to the world around you, to print media, to billboards. You're going to see these color schemes that I've talked about repeated again and again and again and again because they're what works visually, right? Um, and so how do you put colors together? Well, you know, the first thing, what we did already, right, was we went ahead, I'm just going to turn off the darts, and, you know, we had two groups of lights, right, and we set, you know, one group to one color, one group to the other color. Okay, that's one way to do it, but we can have a lot more fun in the way we group lights as we get into it. You know, for example, say we take this group of lights up here, 
And here in Onyx, we do a grouping tool of two. I know you can't see it. And we hit next. And so now we have half of them in one color, right? Half and half, pretty typical way to do colors, right? With half of our lights in one, half in the other. Or maybe we go, I'm just going in Onyx and pulling up the 2D plan. And this time I do left and right, right? So there's a center fixture in this uh, show file, but you know, we could do something like, oops, we missed him on the end. Uh, you know, we could do a really strong green, right? And then on the other side, do, you know, a grouping with like an ice blue, okay? Um, there's center fixtures, and so we have to deal with them. Uh, let's just shut them off. And now we've got a really cool left, right, right? Where left and right are dynamic. You could even do like quadrants, right? With four colors. That could be pretty wild. It could be two sets of, of uh, opposite colors on the color wheel, uh, just four similar colors, um, whatever you want to do, right? You know, say we make this a nice opposite, boom. You can do, you know, upstage, you know, the lights behind the stage versus the on the stage fixtures, right? You know, we could go and do our in the air fixtures versus actually i think they're already in red oops um oh that was the position one let's actually click the right cue versus the on stage right and that makes the dynamic high versus low um so in terms of grouping there's you know pretty much the sky's the limits there right there's so many different things you can do so many ways that you can group lights together but i hope this video just quickly gives you some basics of how you can group different color combinations together. In the next video, we're going to hop on a console back there and let's take a look at actually how to make this go, like the nuts and bolts, like, okay, you know, how do different types of fixtures mix colors differently? And how does that affect you as the lighting designer? Because nobody in this industry, no matter how big the show has unlimited resources, nobody can have, you know, lights that just mix every color perfectly. So we're going to talk about the pros and cons of each type of color mixing system and how that's going to affect you. Check it out in our next video. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe. And if you need any lighting gear, head over to Learn Stage Lighting Gear. We want to be your preferred vendor for everything lighting and, and also audio and video. Help us to do that. Visit Learn Stage Lighting Gear. Ask for a quote. We'd love to make your day. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.